welcome to our new edition, Salty Sunshine Reality Recap with our special guest, Natalie is returning. <laughs> Hi, Thank Lisa. You, Natalie. Thank you for joining me. We're going to try out this new segment. We'll try to do it like maybe once a month in the middle of the month to just recap reality housewives and stuff because Brianna doesn't watch that stuff and you're, you watch all the good stuff. So. <laughs> Love the housewives. <laughs> how's it how's it going? Natalie, you live in Tampa. So how was the yeah. hurricane aftermath? It was it was rough. I'm still recovering. I definitely have the hurricane uh fatigue going on right now. Um yeah. it was it was a really, really scary storm. So thankfully everyone in my family and we're doing good and um and Jesse's family too. So it, it was really, really scary. And uh, I didn't really take it seriously when the storm came. And Is this now your first I know. Hurricane? Huh? Is that your first well, hurricane? It, um, Irma was really my first hurricane. That was in 2017. And this storm was comparable to that, but it was it, it, it was a direct hit for us. So this was my real hurricane. It experience. wasn't even a direct direct as it was supposed to right. be. Right. Right. It yeah. was so scary. It was awful that night. And we lost power for a few days, which was, we were rough in it. <laughs> so. I always say the worst part of a hurricane is the aftermath. Yeah. For Everyone's sure. Everyone's asking you, how are you? How are you? Like days before the hurricane, it's like, nothing's happened yet. We're just, you know, sitting ducks right now or we're, we're waiting. And then it's like, do we leave? Do we not leave? And part of me is like, I wish we would have just evacuated, but that is hard to do as well because gas is scarce and then you have to find a place to stay. So, um, I'm glad we stayed, but it was not easy having, not having power for a few days. Well, this, this hurricane in particular, because everyone was flipping out because yeah. of the hurricane that happened just a week yeah. before. So that's why it was even worse to leave and the gas and everything else. It was, yeah. it was two hurricanes back to back. So thankfully everyone's okay. <laughs> Brianna and I recap, did you, well, you didn't have power, so you didn't see all the drama that right. was happening online, but one of them, I don't know if you've heard of this guy that lives on a boat there in Tampa Bay. His name is, he calls himself Lieutenant Dan or whatever. His name yes, is I heard about him. Can I just tell you that on yesterday's podcast or this week's podcast with Bri, we recapped it and I posted the clip and he ripped me a new asshole on Twitter really it was so bad i reported it and i don't they said that they took care of it or did something because he was like you, you he goes you dumb bitches because <laughs> you really? know the, you know the story like tell me a little bit about it because I, I i've been reading so many things lately and i'm a little bit <laughs> okay so lieutenant dan and this is all alleged obviously like everything we talk about is just hearsay like we're just hearing the story i wasn't there allegedly of course of course so he lives on this this small boat and it was supposed to hit direct in the bay like that would have been a problem he only got saved because it didn't hit direct obviously when we're south to um fort pierce area whatever sarasota and anyways this young kid his name was terrence went and like started videotaping him and getting all this attention and he tried to help him and he mm -hmm. opened a gofundme and this guy's like he has mm -hmm. he's missing like his half of his leg he whatever he obviously doesn't have a lot of means and i don't know allegedly he does drugs allegedly he has a record allegedly all this stuff so he raises at first like seven grand and then after all this stuff like the guy got like he doesn't have a license so he just did the gofundme really fast so he had to do it in his name and all that stuff and um the guy doesn't have a bank account or anything but the guy kind of turned on him i wasn't i didn't follow the whole thing i just see all the aftermath and yeah. it's like i don't even care about him i just want to see the dogs that are being fostered and like adopted <laughs> i don't care i'm like get off my screen so but what is the gofundme for is it just to basically just to help him? to help him because he lives on a boat he had nowhere to go he doesn't have any money he's okay. like kind of homeless type of thing but in a boat right. and so the the first thing was he raised seven grand and I, you know there's fees they take fees so he gave him sixty nine hundred dollars so the guy went so now the guy's like online all the time like he he's streaming the whole time like he's one of those people that say i don't want to be he's he's joe jansen john jansen i don't mm -hmm. want to be famous but he's always right. on, like in the public so now he like wants to he's he sees the money so he started bitching that oh look i'm not he it's a hundred dollars short like he's not even grateful 
his daughters started coming out that he hasn't talked to in over 10 years saying, you better not give my dad that money. He's going to kill himself with drugs. He's going to throw it all away, all this stuff. So it turned into this drama. And so when the kid saw that this was happening, like he kind of like saw it for what it was and he kind of pushed away. (laughs) So he raised like 30 grand though. So he has this issue now because he's like, I'm not giving that guy any more money. Like he shouldn't have even got what I gave him. And now he's like threatening to sue everyone, the guy in the boat. And all, he's like ridiculous. He's one of those people that like you regret helping. So, <laughs> so he talked, the guy is online like saying, everyone that donated, please ask for a refund. I already talked to GoFundMe. They said this is only choice, blah, 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 blah. So the guy's saying he's going to, he's going to sue him because he wants the 30 grand and he doesn't, but he still doesn't have a license. He still can't, he doesn't have a bank account. Like, I don't know. So that's the drama with Dan. So I did, a, we talked about it and I did a clip and I put it on my Twitter and he commented the most insulting stuff. I was, I was like, I blocked him. But now Twitter has this new thing, which I only know because I blocked him. But it says Twitter has an or X has a new way to block. So you can block someone and they can interact or leave comments, but they will still see your feed. Interesting. How do you feel wow. about that? I don't think that's good. I think that if you block somebody, it should be like they don't see anything that you post or yeah. be able to comment on anything. Because what if they're yeah. dangerous? Exactly. I don't. I don't have Twitter. I don't do that. But um, I. I don't think that people should be able to. Do, I think you should be able to block people, just like on Instagram. You should be able to block somebody. They can't see anything like that. But yeah. It's kind of funny that he commented on that. I mean, that really like struck a nerve for Lieutenant Dan. No, and that just shows you how much he's on. He's online because he probably is like following his hashtag. He's following like whatever because he's all over. And then when I went to his page, because I'm like, maybe this is like a spam account. I don't know. Like, you know, but it is him because he's like, I haven't talked to my my daughter in 10 years. Don't listen to her. She just she's a clout chaser. (laughs) Wow. I was like, wow. Hmm. I was like taken aback. He's like, you dumb bitches. <laughs> He's like, everything you're saying is false. Blah, blah, blah. He, was like, he goes, maybe I should sue you too, along with everyone else. How is he going to sue it, everyone? I mean, it, it takes some money to sue people unless he has, you know, he got that GoFundMe money, but it sounds like he doesn't. So, Well, but- he got some of it. And then he had some other guy named, I forgot, some rapper. I don't know. Some other guy that has a rap sheet that wants like in on the fame. Once that Terrence guy moved out, which is a very nice kid, like he's not this other like more like street guy looking guy comes that has apparently allegedly has a rap sheet. He wants to like get in the all this stuff. There's all this drama. I really don't care anymore. I'm just like this guy's nuts, and yeah. I want nothing to do with him. <laughs> don't help people who don't want to help themselves. I don't. I don't know if that's exactly the saying, but you know you have to be careful. And also, no good deed goes unpunished. That I truly believe that. I you do. give them a finger, they want your body. Yep. That's all I have to say. I've always, mm-hmm. and in that clip that I posted, he, it probably pissed him off because I was like, I was telling my daughter because it's true. I'm like, if I had all the money in the world to give, the first people I'm helping are not homeless people. That, no. I've always said that. I will always help the person that has three jobs and can't make ends meet. Right. All day, every day, that's where my money will go happily. I will never, because it's like, if you're homeless because you just lost your house and that's not homeless to me, like that's a bad situation, that I will help. But like people that choose to live like all day and, and like just drink and not do anything, no, I'm not I'm not doing that. Yeah, Cause, I know. You know. It's a tough situation with when it comes to homeless, but I agree with that. I mean, I think you want to help people that, like I said, that are helping themselves, that are at least- that work. Trying- if mm-hmm. you're not working, what are you doing? I work all day. Do you think I like it working? I don't. I'm miserable all day working. You don't like, like to work. That's for sure. <laughs> I'm miserable. What do you? And you're sitting on the corner begging? No. Anyways, I'd be, obviously every situation is different, but in general. Right. So this is our reality recap. Natalie, our um, Real Housewives of Orange County. Let's start there. So I definitely caught up on that. Again, okay. I was a little out of sorts this week so i wasn't able to watch everything but i definitely watched oc i'm loving it this season um yeah i don't know what are your thoughts first you so tell the last time you when you guest hosted last time we mm-hmm. we talked about emily and her right. the, the fashion show and how she yeah. i don't agree that she was projecting like no one can read your mind you know with heather and the whole sizing thing but in in later episodes 
I, I, I noted here that she said, I want her to see me as a size six. It's like, come on, you're not a size six. We yeah. You want her. And even if you are a size six, like it's hard to guess. So like, you're going to guess up, not down. Cause then the clothes won't fit you at all. Like, you know, when she said that statement, I was like, come on, you, you, it's like telling the husband, like to read your mind. I want you to do that. It's like, you have to communicate. <laughs> right. I so, saw her that she, she really wanted Heather to like, I don't really know what she wanted from Heather because exactly. she came at her so aggressive about mm -hmm. it instead of like taking her aside or calling her and saying like, I felt really bad about myself during the show. And I know it had nothing to do with you, but this is how right. I felt and blah, blah, blah. And yes. so cause Heather came off kind of like she does where she's, um, she kind of came off like she's above the situation or, but I think she was angry because obviously she wanted her to call her up and ask her about that. Like a friend would. Because she and was, it was accusatory. It, it was like, accusatory. Yeah. Exactly. And so at first I was like, oh, Heather's not really, you know, being sympathetic. And then I was like, no, I get where Heather's coming from now. I really Heather do. Was, she was just straight up pissed. Yeah. Exactly. But she was taking away from her event to talk right. about her her size issues. <laughs> right. And also, let me just say this. Maybe I shouldn't say this, but I've noticed with Emily this season, yeah. she looks great, but all the clothes she's wearing are very small, it seems like. Like very small. And so, and I'm very sympathetic to, you know, body image and and all of that. But I just noticed that and I'm like, maybe she's wanting so badly to be the size six that she's even trying, you know, you just have to be accepting of the size that you are and find clothes that fit you because you look better. So I've noticed that too. Oh, I love to wear clothes that are bigger than my size because I, I feel it makes me look skinnier. Yeah. For sure. It does. It totally does. And I've done that too, where I've worn stuff too small and I'm like, why are you trying to squeeze into a size four? Like you don't need to. Not just only move. that. I feel like if I feel uncomfortable, I look mm. worse. Like, cause I'm oh, always like totally. tugging and this and that. Yeah. You know, you're unbuttoning the pants when you sit down, you're like, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I always, always do a size larger. Um, so Alexis's meltdown mm -hmm. when Shannon uninvited her or not un uninvited her just announced she wasn't invited to this. What is it? London trip. Is that where they are? Yeah, they're going to London. Yeah. So that she was, had a melt. Weird spot. That was like Oscar worthy nonsense. Like, what was yeah. that? What was that? When she did that, I was like, well, first of all, I'm like, the girls are going over there and they're like making it out to be like they're going to announce it to her, like, we're going to go. And then I, I don't know. I would have just called her up and been like, this is what it is, or check, check your text. I mean, the whole thing was just, they must they're, have known. They were like emotional support party. Right. I guess. But like, I wouldn't have wanted, to be the one to go there because we you know how alexis is she's she's nuts so the, the fact that she's pretending to be shocked like what why would she invite she's the olive branch what olive branch you're you're sitting here like ruining her life like I know. what was she expecting i mean that's these people are delusional i mean really her and john and they're so thirsty and she's blaming production and blaming editing or whatever it is to making her look bad i'm like no you look bad on this show like you could have you're like you're not reading the room like you have to take a step back because there's something you're not noticing yeah i don't I... know sometimes i'm like why did they bring alexis in because it's not like shannon was just gonna welcome her like oh you're you know sleeping with my ex so but let me tell you questions. if alexis would have come in and been chill and been like look whatever your past is with him he's your ex i know how it is to have an ex i'm staying out of it right like, I'm just like, don't involve me. And that would have made for better whatever. But she like I mean, went in there like John, whatever. What's his name? Johnny J. Johnny J. Like, yeah. his, like his representative and like all the, she's totally messed up. Her approach was ridiculous and she should have just stayed out of it. I know. She's and, coming off so bad and it's not editing. I'm sorry. It's not. I heard that she said she's not coming back. Mm. Did you hear that? I heard that too. I read that somewhere and I was like, mm -hmm. I think if they asked her back, she would come back for sure. And I'm shocked oh. that John's not on the show because he is, oh I, no, he's been interviewed a couple times. I did I see I thought that. she said she's not, like she's just not coming, like she's the one that is not coming back. She, it, it, that might be it. Maybe she's deciding she doesn't want to, but 
I think she is. Did you also see where Shannon, this last episode, you probably are going to, we're probably going to go over this, but the text message about the lawsuit. Did you see that? Refresh my memory. So Shannon is also trying to keep bringing up the fact that when Bellino, um, the husband, Jim, when Jim Bellino sued Shannon and Tamara, that Alexis was involved. She's been trying to prove oh, this. Right. So this last episode, she goes onto her phone. And cause I think with the text messages that Alexis and her, you know, that she sent Alexis, she kind of scrolled through her phone and was like, Oh, I have this old text. And she even showed it. She showed the receipts and it was saying, you know, we are going to send you blah, 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 blah. So there was, you know, it was, it was Alexis basically saying that we're going to sue you. And so yeah. that was some proof. And she texted Tamara about it. And Tamara was like, I don't care. You know, I think that's going to be the next show. And I'm just like, Oh, but that- so you haven't seen this week? No. Oh, I have. Okay. <laughs> so, well, this week sorry, I was caught up. I'm all mixed up right now. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. This week they're in the, they're in the trip in London. And the whole trip, I mean, they have some fun, they do whatever, but they're, the whole trip, like, they're just like, Shannon loses her shit at the end and walks out and, you know, she's a drama queen. Oh my God. She's so, the one, one of my pet peeves is like when you talk to someone about something and their first reaction is to blow up. So like, they just completely shut you down and like the conversation's over. Yeah. And that's like a manipulation control tactic, which I hate when right. people do that. Cause it's like, just have the conversation. Like, just listen to what they got to say, respond, not resp- like stop with the dramatics. I got it. Um, she's like, I'm on a flight. I'm out of here. <laughs> she, she, everyone's like laughing at her because she looks so ridiculous. But, yeah. Um, oh, I did see that episode. I'm sorry, Lisa. I'm so like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I saw that episode. Yeah. So you're caught up. Yeah. I'm caught up. <laughs> That's when, cause Heather said, I feel like I was used because you said something yeah. on Jeff Lewis and then I don't recall it that way, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So she flips off for no reason. And she's like, that's where that's where Shannon loses me because she's so manipulative in that way. Like she tries to control everything with her dramatics. I agree. And she's oh. that's the thing. And also, I don't really understand. Like, I think Heather has a point where she's like, what exactly happened with this situation? Like, no. just lay it all out there. But you're going on the show and you're saying, oh, I don't remember. And then you're saying, well, he didn't do this and that. I mean, it doesn't make any sense at the day, end of the day. Yeah. Just lay it all out there, say exactly what it is. And then she's talking about everything and they're in a lawsuit. So it's like, what are you allowed to talk about? All she has to say, hello, we've all been there. All she, or I don't know. I think a lot of you have been there. All she has to say is, look, I have a boyfriend. I need money. He gives it to me. There's no loan talk. After the fact, he tries to give me a no. And you know what I did? I ignored it because I wasn't about to be doing that, but he already right. gave me the money. So I wasn't part of the agreement. That's all right. she has to say. Like he wanted it to be a note after the fact. Right. And I wasn't about to do that. Right. Period. We've all been there. Your boyfriend gives you money and then he changes it later. You're like, no, sorry. Like you already gave it to me and that wasn't talked about. So yeah. If you're going to give money in a relationship, don't expect for it to be paid back. I mean, that's just the way it goes, but I don't know. I, <laughs> She's just all over the place. It's it's too much. Yeah. Shannon. And then Heather, it was so hurt because I mean I do feel her her pain because they, no one asked her about her mammogram. I know, and she's the one that took them there. I know. I feel like I can relate relate to Heather though because I feel like I wouldn't have brought it up either, and I probably would have been but her because you're mm-hmm. what are you going to do in the middle of a bunch of girls when they're happy about the results? Be like, hey, what about me? Yeah. You don't want to be the Debbie Downer. Yeah. But when you're like a self-sufficient person and you like she is like people kind of like take that for granted and they don't check up on you as much because you're not like this, like not that the other girls are weak, but they're a little more like they need more coddling and she's like very like independent. So maybe they kind of like forget about her. Yep. I totally think that's exactly what happens with Heather where she's kind of the leader of the group and then people don't check in with her or they assume that everything was fine. And here she's the one with the biggest risk. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. She's Miss. Pr- she's fancy pants. Yeah. You know? So her, her breasts must be fancy. Her breasts have to be fancy too. Of course. But, um, it came out this week though. Did you see Tamara is like a self per- Oh, self-diagnosed. She says she was diagnosed, but we all know. Right. It's like a loose diagnosis from her therapist that she's uh, on the spectrum. 
I'm sorry. It's not a spectrum issue. It's a personality problem. Basically, her therapist is saying, you don't, re- you don't really know how to be empathetic. And so. And on the spectrum not- could be like, th- on the spectrum means it's like anywhere between here and like here. Right. Like, there's no real diagnosis. Like you're on some sort of spectrum, like you're on there somewhere. What does that mean? I, I don't know. I think, I think it's very vague now. And so I, I know that they've put a lot of these personality or, you know, whatever disorders on the spectrum now. And so there's really, it's hard to like name them, but she basically is saying, I think but she's, she's autistic? Realizing- is she saying she's autistic? No, I, I think because with autism and I don't know that exactly, but I think it's a, it's a, with autism, it's hard to uh, receive emotion or, you know, not even receive it. What's, what am I trying to Emp- think of? Empathy? empathy? Yeah. To be empathetic or to understand yeah. emotions, I think. And so I think with Tamara, she, it's a cop out for her. She's basically saying I'm on the spectrum and that's why I'm such an asshole. <laughs> Well, you saw Heather McDonald's little but make fun of her skit on yes. Instagram. Love Heather. Oh my god. I, I was shocked that Heather did that. I'm like, whoa, like that was ballsy. That was right? ballsy. But she's she like, doesn't she doesn't hold back when it comes to Tamara. She doesn't like her. That's she's like sure. she's like, Tamara got self diagnosed what did she call her? Like an asshole? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like is that what she said? Asshole? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. What do you think about that? I mean, do you think I, I think Tamara was raised, I mean, you can kind of, she talks about it a little bit, how, you know, she didn't, wasn't shown a lot of love and wasn't, and I think they're very reactive the way she was raised, like her, her parents or her, you know, mom, whatever. But let me, she's, she's at a, a woman of a certain age. You're just like at this, you just work, like you have to grow up and like deal with it and work through it. And like, she's silly. She, I, I hate that they brought her back on the show. I said, her, I can't stand watching her. I don't want her on my screen. Like. I have no right. interest. I don't care. I think she's just playing the game and yeah. she knows this is what she does. She, she drinks a lot. I don't, I don't think she's necessarily an alcoholic. I think she just drinks a lot on the show. She also said she does that because of her, the being on the spectrum type of deal. <laughs> and I'm okay. like, you cannot blame the drink. Also, she's looking like more of a drunk than Shannon this season. So I'm like, <laughs> that's not good. She's then she, very like rude. Like she's just so abrupt. I, I would say she's more having Tourette's than <laughs> like deep, maybe a Tourette's like she just bo- word vomits like nasty shit all day long. Like even Eddie, he commented on some, somebody's post. Did you see that where they were like, are you going to divorce Tamara or something <laughs> like that? And he was like, the, the woman that is on the show is not the same woman that I'm married to. So he's basically saying. Yeah. So even Eddie is saying that. And I mean, don't quote me because that's not exactly what it was, but it was along those lines. But he's saying she's playing a part. And then also the alcohol is a lot of that is just getting drunk because you're on a show and that's what they do. They get drunk and then they start going off on each other. So interesting. Yep. I saw that post and I was like, huh, that's interesting. Speaking of Eddie, did, like that fight he had with Ryan or not fight, like the little altercation they had at that dinner. Mm-hmm. That was ridiculous. The yeah. wait time. I'm sorry, but you're sitting. If she's doing that for a show, like you should have just been like, I mean, you know how she is. Like you should have been like, don't say, don't do that. Like I don't know. Like it was so over the top. Yeah, like, calling him a bitch and whatever. Yeah. Like, how embarrassing. Like I know she was like four things. martinis deep too. So that there was, I think Eddie saw it. He remember he even went up to that uh, the new girl's husband and was like cut her off with the martinis <laughs> maybe it's because she doesn't eat yeah and i just think they're drinking too much like i think with her she just starts drinking too much and then it's like let me go into re- you know tamra reality mode where i'm gonna yell at everyone and but how much could she have drank like they weren't even there that long and didn't she like oh, no. get baptized isn't she like this reborn christian like with that disgusting way of talking to people like oh my god you know Sometimes those are the worst ones. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> oh my God. Speaking of that, this has nothing to do with the OC, but remember the girl from One Tree Hill? What's her name? Which one? Is she um, the she blonde? Just, no, the brunette. Uh, she just was on Call Her Daddy. I haven't listened to it, but I'm dying to go okay. hear it. Uh, Bethany Joy Lenz. Okay. Do you know who she is? I'm going to look her up. Remember her? Your screen's a little blurry. Let me look. Oh, yes. I can see it now. Yeah. 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 I remember her. So she 
is on Call Her Daddy because I think she just wrote a book and apparently, which is super fascinating because I, you know, that show was amazing. It's, it's like a classic. After the show, she married some guy and was in a cult for years and she had oh. to like escape the cult. And it's like this whole thing. <laughs> I'm like, what? Is it the Nexium? Oh, Nexium. I don't know if that's the right word, but, um, or right name. Do you remember the cult name? No, I just okay. heard this. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go listen to the podcast and I'm going to read her book because I'd love that. I'm going <laughs> to listen to that. Yeah. I'm going to listen to that. I love cult stuff. It's like so fascinating to fascinating. me. Fascinating. I'm just like, what sucks people into these things? And I know being young, being vulnerable, looking for mm -hmm. Hollywood. Kind of guidance. Yeah, Hollywood. Weirdo. Also, like think of Scientology. They just help them get more famous. So they're all about that. So I think that's it for OC. Nothing okay. else really happened right terry got a nose yeah. job like <laughs> yeah he needed one <laughs> i love him dude. i love him when he's on I like terry too when he's on heather's podcast i eat it up he's so cool like i love him he's funny he's a funny guy oh and vicky vicky posted a, a reaction to tamra saying she's on the spectrum she's like this is disgusting you might as well be brooks he lies about cancer. You lie about this. Like you just, just cause your behavior is abhorrent. And like, now you're trying to like divert. Cause I think it's cause she's getting so much hate Yeah, that she's trying to like do damage control. Or maybe she's trying to tell herself there's no way this is like, I'm so bad. So there must be something wrong. With me. Exactly. She's trying to justify her behavior. And it's like, no, you're just being an asshole. Like just be yourself. Be nice. You don't need to be this person. Yeah. Oh, and I will say, I really like Jen this season. I think that there's something so like, even though she might be a little naive and, you know, maybe not with the right person, but there is something about her that I just yeah. really, really like. I think she's a very genuine, sweet, kind person. Even Eddie mentioned that about her. I think he likes, I think he can kind of forgive Ryan because of Jen. Um, yeah. But I don't think that's going to last at all. I know Ryan has a lot really? of things. I really don't think it's going to last. I don't. I need more information. I, I'm, I'm yeah. like torn. I don't know what's happening for real. He seems to really love her. I, I don't know. Yeah. I think it's more of like, maybe it's a way him being with Jen will help better him. But I think he's, besides the money problems and where, how does he make money? Besides that, I just think he's a player. I think he's somebody that will probably not be. I think um, he used to monogamous. be. I think it used to be sometimes players get sick of that and they get, they reach a certain age and they're done with that kind of thing. Cause it's boring at this point. Like, yeah, you know? they get older and they, they, yeah. they get softer. Well, you know, no pun intended. Yeah. You're like, this is, <laughs> 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 uh, that too, but you know, Salt Lake city you've watched, right? Yes. I've watched a little bit of Salt Lake. Yes. Can I tell you how much I love Salt Lake? I love the background. I think it's so fun. I, I, did you watch Secret Lies of Mormon Wives? I haven't watched that yet, but that's oh, my next show. <gasps> you Everyone's telling me to watch it. Yeah. You gotta watch it. But I like it because it reminds me of that kind of vanilla drama that's like, it's not real drama. It's like, it's, it's like lighter. It's lighter. Yeah. It's not as heavy as like the OC. Like there's so much right. hate. This is yeah. more like stupid. And they're fabulous. And they're for, they're for, for, for whatever the, and the background and the, and the, it's just a beautiful, like, scenery yeah. it's beautiful. oh i love it it makes me I feel cozy it. and and cute and i just want to watch it and like yeah, yeah it's fun um so mary i can't stand i don't know why she's back but um yeah why is. is mary back i, I don't, don't know. know i never understood that she sticks out like a sore thumb like you're not friends with anyone you can't stand anything you don't want to do any activities you hate she everyone hates she hates them i think she needs the money and i think that they probably told her last season Cause I feel like this season, she's a little more loose, loose enough. Yeah. She's not as big of a bitch. And I think it's because they're like, if you want to come back, you're going to have to cut this out. Like it can't be so bad. Yeah. Participate yeah. a little bit, please. I mean, <laughs> I totally think they had that talk cause she's a tiny bit more involved. I'm shocked but, that she's back. I'm shocked. I'm shocked that she said, she, where did they go? Detroit? No. Where, where did they go? Yeah. Where, uh, uh minneapolis milwaukee? Milwaukee. milwaukee she grew up in milwaukee did you hear her when she said she grew up next to jeffrey dahmer yes and her dad <laughs> said he smelled the flesh and she's like well, my dad, he, he's like i would smell stuff and i didn't realize it was like cooked bodies that they're... and she's like well you know and my, but my dad also made up stories so i don't know if that's true i think she makes up stories too when and she then, said that i was like really 
I was like, if that's true, that is fascinating. Like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. Disgusting. Oh my God, gross. And then she's like, I have to pee, I have to pee, but I'll hold it. Don't worry. I have a tampon. Like, what? That. what? Okay, that's on the spectrum. That's, that's a mental... What just came out of your mouth? Like, what? She's saying, okay, and it's gross, but it's like she said, put a super tampon in when you have to go somewhere that you don't want to use public restrooms, and that's going to help you no, not... No, but I like heard it that if you put a tampon, it makes you not have to pee. Do you think okay. she meant that she's peeing on the tampon? I don't know what she meant. I'm just like, what are you I talking I don't know about? what she, to me, I heard it makes you not pee. Not, not have to pee. That might make and that's sense. that's not true. Like, that's not true because no. I've used tampons and, and I, I have to pee. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I don't under, I'm just. But a super, a two supers or three supers are not going to hold in urine when you pee. So that doesn't make sense either. It's weird she she is on the spectrum let's just put it that way we'll, i feel we'll like i'm you. watching mental health time I, I i don't understand like that is such a crazy thing to say i think they brought her in just for the wacky factor yeah. to like just yeah. you know mix it up a little bit because oh yeah. my god but can, i will t- tell you the new girl brought there's a few new girls bronwyn mm-hmm. Brittany. And they're bringing it because Bronwyn, I love. I like her. She's so, and she's not acting. She looks like so genuine. She's she's bringing so much authenticity to the table. Her story, she's fascinating. Like, I love her. Like, she's really, like, interesting. Like, I'd like to watch her. Um, her outfits are kooky, but that's yeah. who she is. Wearing that heart, I think she looks silly. That hot dog costume. Like, she said it was couture. But other, anyways, but um, I think she's super interesting. The story of her daughter. Did you see this week? Remind me of the story. <clears throat> Maybe you didn't see this week. She has a daughter. She's married to a guy that's super a lot older than her. But then she has a daughter that when she, oh. I, I don't know if they were ever married, but when she was young, she had the when daughter. She was younger, and yeah. Passed away, like, right. Like, I, I don't think he ever met her or if he did, it was like short. So he passed away. So she was left with this baby. And I don't know if she was pregnant when he passed away or she had, was just born, but his parents wanted nothing to do with the baby. And they even offered her like, either they offered her money to like get an abortion or something. I, I don't remember exactly, but like, they just wanted to get rid of the problem. They didn't want any, maybe she was pregnant when he passed. It was such a juicy story. I was like, wow. And so her daughter's like older now, like in her teens and she wants, she doesn't know anything about her dad the the girl has like one picture of the of the dad she's like i only see one picture she's like that's the only picture i have all this stuff so because the parents shunned her she just like never talked to them and she raised her kid and she moved on but now the kid is affected because she's like she wants to know more about that side of her family and she's like i think she's already talking to them but it's like it's such a good story like you'll see it if you haven't seen it oh my god it's so interesting i'm upset that's the stuff i like to hear about i want to hear about people's past and like you know, about their kids and things like that. Um, That's what's interesting. And, you know, that's what I would want to hear from Alexis. But of course, (laughs) not to go back to OC, but you know, it's like, Mm -hmm. give us us something about you, not just about- I know, show us your person. Like everything about like the tit for tat and the same argument. It's like, that's not who you guys are. Like, yeah, yeah, I like the real stuff. It's so fun. And then Whitney cut her hair short. She looks great with her hair short. She She needs to keep it that way. She looks hot. But yeah, because some seasons she's looked rough and then she's also looked a little too like, I don't all, know. All of, them, all of them. And yeah. that's, well, that's what I like about Bronwyn too, is she looks very natural. Like I'm sure she's had some work done, but she doesn't look too crazy. You know, who yes. looks, you know, who, who, Angie, Angie's face. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. It's not, it doesn't, it, it's like a rock. It's not moving. Yeah. Like, like it's just really tight, but, um, so Brittany is the other one that's new and she's the one <laughs> that has the douchebag boyfriend. Like, oh my God. She's like one of those relationships that all the girlfriends are like, I don't want to hear it. I can't. Oh my yeah. God. Stop. Like they just, they're not even like, did you see, you didn't see that episode. Cause she meets with him in the restaurant after she breaks up with him. No, I didn't see that one. No. Okay. Well, we will talk about it next time again, once you're refreshed, but like every, like while they're on the trip, she finds out that he was texting somebody on the trips, like makeup artists or something. 
so he's like a cheater and like he won't put a label on it and she's like when we're in public he like he'll drop my hand if a girl a pretty girl walks by or he he says i'm his friend i'm his best friend like he's just like a jerk he's like breadcrumbing her but she, he wants and it just doesn't stop it's a cycle and she's one of those- a little bit of it i think i was like going back again i'm all screwed up this week but yeah i saw a little bit about that where she was complaining about it and yeah. i was like girl no 10 years of to- that like enough why why even deal with that find somebody else you cannot Apparently, no. he's like in the family of the osmond brothers or the osmond or something who cares i don't yeah. know but she needs to break up with him but um it's infuriating it's like you want to shake her you're like oh my god this guy's just like no good but, but that's um, great for reality tv because we love we love relationship drama especially when they put it all out there you yeah. know i guess <laughs> So when you see this week's episode, they're at a dinner and they're talking about like her issues and all that. So, she, you know, when you, you're, you know, the guy's no good for you, but like, you're still like defending him because like, whatever. So she's yeah. one of those. So everyone's like, oh my God, he's a loser, whatever. But then she's kind of like backtracking. Cause she's now she's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to be without him, whatever. So then now she's being, instead of like letting the girls egg her on, she's like pushing back and like, oh, well, what about you? And like, now she's getting defensive. So the girl Bronwyn um i don't know what she said and she's like well uh why are you with your husband like are you with him for the money or this or the this or the that and she starts asking her all these intrusive questions and bronwyn again i love her she just answered them she's like fair fair enough i'll answer it this this yeah. that blah 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 um we don't have a prenup he obviously trusts me we have a great relationship like what else do you want to know do we have sex like it's, it was just like really like i loved it she's just like yeah but then she took it too far and she's like, she got too intrusive and everyone's like, all right, this is stupid. Like enough. <laughs> but yeah. um, Lisa's ability to continue to eat while she's fighting <laughs> is top notch. She's shoveling food in her mouth while she's having a full blown bitching argument with Angie at the table. And she's just eating. She's eating through the, the whole thing. So her mouth is full and she's telling her off while her mouth is full. That's amazing. That is so weird. I remember seeing that and I was like, what is she? No, no, she, she does it this week. You're going to see like, you know, she like loves to eat fast food. She's like an eater. Yeah, she's always eating junk. Yeah. And she loves eating. So like she's having a full blown out fight and she has her mouth is full of food. It's amazing. Oh my God. How can you talk? How can you yell at somebody when your Not mouth only is that, She keeps shoveling it in. Like she doesn't stop eating. Like she's like, it's so funny. I thought as thin as she is and the junk food, I'm just, I'm shocked. I'm like, she has an amazing metabolism because she's been like this. Amazing. Yeah. Forever. And I mean, she's not getting any younger. I'm like, girl, you're living off of soda and. (laughs) No, it's so amazing because she's, you know, once you want, you know, that article that came out that women, once your body has like this full blown change, like I think 44 years old. Mm -hmm. And then I forgot what, what the other age was, if it was younger or older, but she's past that. So she, her body is like maintaining amazingly because most people at that age, even if they could do it before, like they can no longer do it because their body changes. So, yeah. Um, you don't watch New York. I haven't watched any of it yet. I've seen like clips, bits and pieces. Okay. Of it. You know, Rebecca Minkoff is on there. Really? Yeah. You know, the designer, right? She's a designer. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting because that'll be an interesting addition. Are well, you liking it so far this season? I like New York because it's tame. It's tone. It's another like vanilla. ish. Yeah. There's no real drama. Like it's just kind of dumb, but there's yeah. a girl on there named Bryn. She leads with her sexuality yeah. and it's so annoying. I'm like, just stop it. I can't. Everything sucks. Everything's I'm turned on. It's like, stop. Yeah. And she's it's a little like, in your face. I remember her from last season. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. You know, it's been hard for me to get into New York because I was such a huge fan of the original New York. And, yeah. um, like I love, love me some Sonia. I love, I love Sonia, Bethany Frankel. Sonia, even got, though on everyone hates her. She huh? got on my nerves. Sonia got on my nerves. So I, I was, I was, Sonia to me was like a cry for help. Like it was oh, yeah. so, it was bad. I'm like, get this woman some help. Like the, 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 there the was underwear. times it was, yeah. I think there was a lot of like mixing pills with alcohol type of deal with Sonia, but she is a hilarious person. Mm-hmm. And also I love Luann. I mean, she's freaking hilarious, but yeah, I just love that cast. So this yeah. new cast is not, I think I'm just going to have, it's going to have to grow on me. That's for sure. I like it. I don't love it. It's not like, oh, yeah. I can't wait. It's like, I'm going to watch it, but it's like, oh, it's fine. But I yeah. like it. I don't love it. 
I love Aaron. I think she's great. Um, but Rebecca Minkoff is like a fly in the wall. Like she, until now, at least, like she doesn't really. You, you don't. You forget she's there because she's probably not open to being like. I don't know, but there she did say this one thing on the plane that this article came out that she's like in Scientology and she didn't really elaborate on it. Hmm. But that was the only juicy thing. <laughs> That's all she said. That's what happens is you go on these shows and they start digging for information. It's kind of like, you know, going into uh, a trial. You're, they're going to dig up all the information on you. And this is what happens with the reality shows too. So I know. I know. It's That's right. Why- to see a a designer come on because you think they don't need the money. They don't need the recognition. So I think that might be a good little twist. I know. Why would they go on? Like, or maybe they do. And that's what's going on. Maybe they do. But you would think like people that do like crooked things like Jen Shaw, like why would you go on reality TV? Like, are you crazy? That I don't understand. But I also think that's (laughs) narcissism at its finest. Yes. (laughs) You never think you're going to get caught. No. Because they don't, in their minds, they're not doing anything wrong. I, I'm not doing it. I'm I'm not scamming people. And it's like, yeah, yeah. you are. She's Jen, still in jail, right? I was about to say, I saw an article the other day saying that they might be shaving off like a lot of years of her sentence. So I'm like, if they put her back on that show, I will not watch. No. I will not watch. Like if they keep celebrating bad behavior, like I can't. No. I won't watch. I No, not not what she did. I think what she did was so wrong and scamming people and it, it, it was awful and, and i also think she's a bad person i think she's i was gonna bad- say not only what she did her behavior is not enjoyable to watch is she's a nasty person she's an asshole yeah yeah she makes tamra look really like no they're the same team <laughs> i think i think tamra is so like cheesy corny like silly i i don't i don't ever want to see her like i don't care yeah I just, I just think she does it for the show. I don't really think she's that person. I think that she's a wife and a mom and I'm, I don't think she's perfect, but I think she drinks too much. Mm-hmm. And then it's just like, what are we watching? All- like, what's the point? Like, I know it's supposed to be real. Speaking of real and that dinner, which you'll see Shannon, like when she's all upset about whatever, she's yeah. like, this is like, what did she say? She says something so crazy. Like, this is like, you're putting our real life on a reality show. And it's like this. And then Heather goes, this is our real life. Yeah. I like, saw that. You almost said like, how dare you get do something so real on this stupid reality show, like type of thing. Like I forgot the wording, yeah. but everyone looked at her like we're showing our real lives. So that was interesting. Yeah, that was interesting. And then Tamara was laughing at her and I'm like, you're just a jerk. Like <laughs> I think she, I think she's so angry with her because Tamara never felt like the re- relationship was about her. It was always about Shannon. And I can see that. Now, so why is she like, so angry at Jen? She has the same vitriol towards Jen and Jen's the biggest sweetheart. So why is she so angry? That's a good point. Exactly. She's just an angry and, person. Like he is. She's a very angry person and she treats Jen like shit. And I'm like, Jen how, needs to call her off. I don't know how Jen looks at, like, I wouldn't even look at her. Like, oh God, she's so yeah. nasty. So nasty. She is. I am excited for the Valley. Did you watch the Valley? Yes, I did. Ooh, I'm so excited for that to come back. I really like that show. Who's, who is on it? Do we know? Cause like, I've heard that Lala's coming on and that oh, okay. Sheena's coming on. If they put Lala and Sheena, I'm not going to like it anymore. Cause I don't like them. I even heard that Sandoval's trying to get on, but I'm like, there's no way. Like, what is he going to bring to the Valley? I mean, the new girl. It's going to change the has... whole dynamic. I hope they push back and they're like, no, they have their own show. Like, why are they going to come here? Yeah. It's, I, I don't like them. It will but... be interesting to see the Brittany and Jack's divorce thing play out, which is sad, but I also is it think. Sad? Is it sad? It's sad in the sense that they're doing it on TV, but it's great in the sense that Brittany's like, I'm Brit- done with you. I but mean, this Brittany, is- I'm done with Brittany because <laughs> I I don't have sympathy for women that the writing was on the on the wall of every building in front of you for how many years and you still continue to want to be with this person. That's on you. Yeah. Boo boo. That's on you. You knew exactly who he was. He did all the bad things before you decided to have a baby and get married. Why did you have a baby and get married with someone so vile? I don't know. What else did you think was going to happen? She's very typical in the sense that I can change him. I can change him. You know, Miss Kentucky over here. We're going to get him to be a Christian. We're going to, you know, also all these people are thirsty on these shows. She got on the show 
And she's thinking, am I going to break up with Jax and potentially be kicked off of this reality show? Who cares? I'm, I don't know. I could never be with a guy that's, I mean, he's like something else. Oh my, oh my God. God. He's not even like, like other, he has like all these other good things going for him. And then he has this one thing. No, he has, everything is bad. Everything. The I know. Intellect, I mean, what do you even talk about? Like, he's not even, what, what is, what's there for you? Anyways, apparently there's rumors that he gave up parental, parental, mm -hmm. whatever for the baby. Yeah. And there's rumors that they were never legally married. What? No. Yeah. Yeah. So there's rumors that, and then Brittany came out and said, no, we definitely were. Yeah. And I'm thinking they had to have been, but they yeah. were even saying that. So, but you're right. I think, I think that he gave up, I think he gave her the full custody and I think he has, you know, she's going to let him see the baby or see, you know. Yeah. And then she got back in the house and now he's somewhere else. Cause he okay. I didn't know about that. That's good. I'm glad that she's in the house. <laughs> of course. It's about time. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So I'm excited for the Valley unless these people, I can't stand Lala. I mean, I like Lala, Lala, Tamra, and who's the other one? <laughs> Just lock them away, throw away the key. That's I it. sometimes cannot stand Lala, and then sometimes I'm like, I love her. Like, there's just, oh. it's a love-hate thing with Lala. I, and I don't know what it is, but it's just, that's how, it, I don't know. Yeah. Sometimes she's so, she she's so reactive, kind of like how Tamra is. And then other times I'm like, she is so spot on. And I do have respect for her for being sober and it's not that I feel bad for her about the Randall thing, but I think she's a good mom. And so I'll give her that. I think she's a really good mom. The reason I can't stand her is because she's just so out of, like, again, she's not self-aware. She says things that, that are so like contradictory, but also like, I hate that she's so, what I really don't like about her is like, anytime she has a, some sort of like aggressive, not um, like a heightened type of conversation, she does the threatening thing. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not the one like you like what are you gonna do like do it like you're gonna get, go to jail like stop I hate the threats yeah like stop with the with the I'm a gangster and I'm gonna like pop off <laughs> like stop yeah. like it's so I know. stupid that she I grew up like. in Utah I mean she's <laughs> I don't like that she's really Lauren I mean at the end of the day what is Lauren gonna do to you you know she's 90 pounds soaking wet come on like <laughs> it's like stop threatening people like no one's scared of you yeah that I don't like. That's why I don't like her. But anyways, so I'm excited for the Valley and I'm Summer too. House. I'm excited for Summer House. I can't wait for that. You know, Lindsay's that's like, pregnant. yes, I think this is her last season because when she has the baby, then things get oh, weird. Yeah. I know. She's not going to be able to party like she used to. Trust me. I know. I have and a the 15 baby. Like, what is she going to do? Like, leave the baby every weekend? She's not going to bring the baby. I want to know who this guy is that she's with. Does she? Oh, I know who she he is. Okay, I didn't know if she had that on her social media or what, but who is the guy? Is he an old flame or? So she dated him a few years before she got with Carl, like a year or two before, like briefly. And it was like bad timing. And he basically, like, they, it was no bad blood, but he was basically like, I'm not in the position to like commit or like get serious with anyone. So like, he kind of like cut it off. But then after she broke up with um, Carl, he, he contacted her. And then oh, okay. it went like full speed ahead. Good for her. I'm happy for her because she's in her late thirties now. She need she needed to like start, you know, the process of trying oh, to have yeah. a baby and she, here she is. So I'm happy for her. Well, what was crazy about that, that situation, I don't know if you remember when, when Carl first broke up with her and all the girls were rallying around her in the apartment, mm -hmm. Paige, Paige DeSorbo, which I love. Do you listen to Giggly Squad? I've listened to it before. Yeah. Yeah. So funny. So it Paige, is. I, I like her. Paige told her. You just got to cut your losses because you never know. In a year, you might meet the love of your life and be pregnant. She told you that. And it happened. It happened. Paige knew. She like. That's amazing. She manifested that for her. Yeah. No, <laughs> she kind of like predicted the future, yeah. which yeah. is amazing. Yeah, I love that. I love it. Also, she was telling her, why are you wasting your time on Carl? Like, what yeah. what is going on here? Everyone knew it. Like, nobody was sad when they broke up. They were like, thank God. Like, all the girls were like, good. I'm glad. So, and she was miserable with Carl. You think? I do. I think yeah. she was forcing it with Carl. I really do. And I think she want, I think Carl was going through his own stuff where he was in sobriety and he didn't have a lot of, he, he you know, he's in between with the jobs and all that. And he's going through something. And with her, she's a, she's a go-getter. And she's like, I want to have kids. She's on a timeline and Carl's, you know, just 
on his own time. And so they just weren't compatible like that. And everyone saw it. They're like, why aren't, and the babes and babes and ba it was like forced, you know? And I, that's what I saw. That's what I thought. Yeah. I think she really yeah. liked him. Like, yeah. as, like when she was with him, but like when you go outside of that, like they, they couldn't make the other stuff work. No. It and was, they yeah. tried a while back too. Like they really did. And so there was always this like back and forth with them. And I'm like, but I think Lindsay's kind of like that. I mean, look at the guy she's with now. He's an old flame. So apparently you just never know. Sometimes it's one that got away. So we'll see how long this lasts. <laughs> I know. Okay. Well, we'll talk about it next time. So okay. I think that's it for now. Thank you so much, Natalie. Thank um, you for having me. We'll see you again in November. I'll, I'll be caught up this time. I pro Well, it, hopefully there's no hurricanes that come in the next few weeks. So no, no, no. Someone. And if there is, you leave town and you watch... Yeah, um, somewhere else. <laughs> exactly. All Make right. sure I have internet. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. Bye.